Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the role of haemoglobin in transporting oxygen. You should then be able to describe the oxygen dissociation curve. And finally you should be able to explain the oxygen dissociation curve in terms of the structure of haemoglobin. Now one of the key roles of the mammalian circulatory system is to transport oxygen. The vast majority of oxygen transported by the blood is carried in red blood cells, which are also called erythrocytes. Erythrocytes have three adaptations for transporting oxygen. Firstly, erythrocytes have a biconcave structure, which gives them a large surface area to volume ratio. This allows oxygen to diffuse in and out rapidly. Secondly, each erythrocyte contains around 300 million molecules of the oxygen carrying protein, haemoglobin. And lastly, although erythrocytes initially have a nucleus, the nucleus is lost before the erythrocytes enter circulation. And the absence of a nucleus means that more of the erythrocytes volume is available to carry haemoglobin. I'm showing you the structure of the haemoglobin molecule here. Haemoglobin has four polypeptide chains. Two are shown in red and two are shown in blue. Each polypeptide chain is bound to a prosthetic group called heme, and we can see these in green here. Heme contains the iron ion Fe2+. Now because haemoglobin contains the heme prosthetic group, it's an example of a conjugated protein. Each of the Fe2 groups in the heme molecules can combine with one molecule of oxygen. So because there are four heme groups in each haemoglobin molecule, one molecule of haemoglobin can combine with four molecules of oxygen. And I'm showing you that here. When haemoglobin binds to oxygen, we now call it oxyhemoglobin. You'll notice that this reaction is reversible, so oxyhemoglobin can also release the oxygen when required. Now we can measure the amount of oxygen that combines with haemoglobin. This is called the oxygen dissociation curve, and I'm showing you that here. On the y-axis, I'm showing the percentage saturation of haemoglobin with oxygen, and on the x-axis, I'm showing the partial pressure of oxygen. Because oxygen's a gas, we don't say the concentration of oxygen, we say the partial pressure. Notice that the curve has an S shape. This is called a sigmoid curve. So what does the oxygen dissociation curve tell us about haemoglobin? Imagine I have a sample of haemoglobin, and these haemoglobin molecules are not bound to any oxygen molecules. As we increase the partial pressure of oxygen, the percentage saturation of haemoglobin increases relatively slowly. At around 4 kilopascals of oxygen, we've achieved 25% saturation. In other words, each haemoglobin molecule is bound to one oxygen molecule on average. So what this means is that at low partial pressures of oxygen, haemoglobin has a low affinity for oxygen. And the word affinity means how strongly the oxygen is bound to the haemoglobin. Now, once one oxygen molecule is bound, the affinity of haemoglobin for oxygen increases, and it becomes much easier to bind further oxygen molecules. If we increase the partial pressure of oxygen to around 7 kilopascals, then we achieve 75% saturation. In other words, two more oxygen molecules have bound. Now, we can explain this by looking at the structure of the haemoglobin molecule. Remember that haemoglobin has four polypeptides and each polypeptide contains a heme group which can bind oxygen. If there's no oxygen bound, then the heme groups have a low affinity for oxygen molecules. This means that it takes a relatively large partial pressure of oxygen for the first oxygen molecule to bind to a heme group. However, when one oxygen binds, the quaternary structure of the haemoglobin molecule changes, and this now increases the affinity of the heme groups for oxygen. So binding more oxygen molecules only requires a relatively small increase in the oxygen partial pressure. Scientists call this effect positive cooperativity. You'll notice that the fourth heme group only binds to oxygen at a fairly high partial pressure. That's because three of the four heme groups have already been filled, so the chances of an oxygen molecule colliding with the fourth heme group is relatively low. In the alveoli, the partial pressure of oxygen is high, and the haemoglobin in red blood cells is around 97% saturated. However, as red blood cells make their way into the body tissues, the partial pressure of oxygen decreases, 
as the tissues are carrying out aerobic respiration. At a certain point, one oxygen molecule now unloads from the haemoglobin molecule. This unloading changes the quaternary structure of the haemoglobin molecule, and the effect of this is to decrease the oxygen affinity of the remaining heme groups. If the red blood cells move into more active tissue, then the oxygen partial pressure will be even lower, and two more oxygen molecules will rapidly unload from the haemoglobin molecule. Now for the final oxygen molecule to unload, the partial pressure of oxygen has to be very low. This is unlikely to happen under normal conditions, but it could take place in very active tissue, for example muscle tissue, during very intense exercise. In the next video, we're going to look at how the oxygen dissociation curve is affected by carbon dioxide. Thank you.